understand on bills, but they send it to our MPs, they send it to 1,200 NGOs and to 500 top companies across the country. They also, very interestingly, they systematically track all aspects related to the functioning of parliament. They train over a thousand journalists in India so they can also participate in the tracking. And all of this work is put on the internet. So it is freely available. So if you and I want to know how much our MP has participated in parliament over the last uh, Lok Sabha session, all that information is available for us to find out. Now, interestingly enough, Whereas PRS originally, originally the idea came out of CRS, but look at how different they are from CRS. CRS is established as an act of Congress, whereas PRS is an independent research group. CRS is funded by the US taxpayers. PRS is grant funded. Now here is where the difference really gets highlighted. CRS is confidential. Its only mandate is the Congress. There's absolutely no public mandate. Whereas by design, PRS's mandate is to make the legislative process more informed, more transparent, more participatory. So it disseminates all information to parliament and public. The scope of CRS is it does not track Congress, whereas PRS tracks our parliament. And because they track, we as citizens of the country today are informed and therefore we know. And in addition, they have a mandate of enabling. So CRS does not enable any interest groups, but PRS is enabling journalists across the country so that we have a more informed media. The impact, PRS is non-partisan. Callbacks mirrored the numerical representation in parliament. There was a study which was done by IIMA. 40% Congress, 30% BJP, 30% others. And between the 14th and 15th Lok Sabha, at least 300 MPs from different political parties have used PRS inputs to prepare for their work in parliament. Over 200 MPs have been directly briefed by the PRS team. Congratulations to PRS Legislative Research. I'm going to invite uh, Mr. K. D. Mariwala from the Marico Innovation Foundation Council to present the award to Mr. C. V. Madhukar of PRS Legislative Research. Plantation scale. 
So basically, they found a fungus which was able to work with indigenous plant roots. Now, the fungus got its nutrition from the roots, but it also, by the way, so that solid waste has a lot of nutrition for plants. The problem is that, that it's in an inert form. The fungus helps to convert the inert form to an available form for the plants. Right? And once they did that, through trial and error, the first six months they failed, they discovered what they needed to do differently. They moved from seeds to saplings. They moved to creating little platforms that gave the saplings space to grow into the ground. And then they started discovering that plants were actually growing there. Right? So first they started with plants that were hardy and could sustain the saline water. Then they found that there was secondary growth of grasses. And then the nature of the sediment started changing. Slowly, the fascinating thing was an ecosystem started getting created there. Butterflies, ants, rats, snakes, insects, all that started growing. And then the crazy people that they are, they started having the courage to actually grow vegetables there. Right? So you have tomatoes. Right? The, the, the soil waste is still grey in colour, but there's tomatoes, there's brinjols, the golds that they're attempting, and now in future they're going to be growing coconut and, and almonds if it succeeds. And the cost of maintaining it is the cost of maintaining any other plantation. They started in 2002 and 3 with 2.5 acres, which grew over the next year to 10 acres, to another 10 acres, and now they have greened 22.5 of the 30 acres. So that's the before, and this is the after of what Malara looks like. By the way, Tara Chemicals would have had to relocate this Sora Ash solid waste dump site. It would have cost them 12 crores to do that. But instead, because of this uh, world-breaking solution, the environmental impact that they now have is 22.5 acres have been transformed with more than 20,000 plants of six varieties have been grown. Vegetables, are, as I talked to you about, and the ecosystem that now exists, and now there is zero fine dust pollution for the neighboring villages that settled around Malara. And that's not all. This is what Tata Chemicals has done. But Terry, interestingly enough, is now taking this technology to other parts of the globe. Right? So what started in Barca and Mitapur, Terry is now taking globally. In Kuwait, they are working with an oil company to reclaim 28 he hectares only with a brackish lake. In Qatar, they are working to reclaim, they are starting with 10 acres of desert, sorry, desert, and then that will grow to, go to about 10,000 acres is what their vision is. And of course, they are taking it to other countries like Mozambique as well. Congratulations to both Tata Chemicals and Terry. May I request uh, Mr. Ranjan Kapoor to come forward, please, to present it to Mr. N.S. Subramanian from uh, Tata Chemicals and uh, from Terry to jointly accept the award. Which meant that a tutor sitting in a remote village at a far 
part of the country could now tutor a student anywhere in the world. As a result of this, the cost they brought down significantly to $100 a month, unlimited tutoring, 24-7, 365 days a year, location independent, good quality tutors who they selected up intensive training because they could select from across the country. Now they have 20,000 students across 48 countries with 2,000 tutors across 98 cities. So what does what this technology platform actually manage to do? You know, it is so unique that if at any point in time, any student connected to any tutor in India, student from the US or any other part of the country, uh, of the world who are teacher in India, in the event that there is a lag and, 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 and the connection breaks, within one minute, the technology allows them to seamlessly reconnect the student and the teacher. The student doesn't even know that the lag is and because they have 2,000 teachers, they can connect up someone or the other across the entire country. There is no need for any extra infrastructure. All of this works out of 2,000 homes and their office in Bangalore. They have both voice and non-voice sessions and an interactive voice, voice, sorry, whiteboard with chat sessions enabled. Right? And therefore, the student can work on the whiteboard as well as talk to his teacher. What has been the impact since its inception three years ago? Teaches over 20,000 students in 48 different countries with nearly 2,000 teachers spread across 98 cities working from home and taking over 15,000 sessions a day. Congratulations, Tutor Vista. <laughs> May I please request uh, Mr. Dorab Sopariwala from the Mariko Innovation Foundation, a council member, to present uh, the awards to Mr. Sashi Patel of Tutor Vista. Right? Most often, 
uh, deep water oil projects across the world take so much time because there's long wait periods. Because there's a single turnkey provider, so you have to wait until they're available. There are very few of them. Reliance decided to go on their own. They directly hired 200 vendors across the world and figure out a way to manage these 200 vendors in time. On peak, they had 20,000 people who were working on this project, which is equivalent to 50 million man hours. Now, not only did they make the breakthrough in the project happen, look at what's incredible. Once they had, once they had all the things manufactured, they actually brought it onto site and they found there were still more problems. Right? In setting up the infrastructure, there was soil erosion, there could be corrosion of equipment, there could be current loads impacting the equipment in the seabed, there could be flow assurance of fluids, basically, uh, they could crystallize on the pipes and therefore the liquid wouldn't flow quickly enough. And therefore, Reliance had to yet again do what they call extreme engineering. But they succeeded in this extreme engineering. They put in 125 million tons of subsea equipment. 500 line kilometers of pipelines and umbilicals, over 200 subsea connections, and over 80 insulation vessels and barges at one given point in time to create an underwater city, literally, through which that they could extract gas for India, and they got it first time right without a single problem or issue. Right, and today, as a result, there's an addition of 550 barrels of oil equivalent. Because of the KGD6 project, we get 40% of, of India's current oil and gas production comes from KGD6. 76 ton lakhs of urea get per year is now being produced as a result of KGD6. There's a saving of 4,000 crore per annum, which is equivalent to an 18% cost reduction. There's a substantial increase in the government's revenue because of KGD6. 50,000 crore worth of revenue is coming to our government, which is equal to about 20% of the current net oil bill. This is estimated in the third quarter, equal to about savings and contribution to India's GDP of 0.35%. And it's a cleaner fuel. So we believe that there'll be a greener footprint by about 35% because of energy from KGD6. Congratulations to the last May I please request uh, Mr. Hash Mariwala to come forward and present the award to uh, Mr. Prem Varma, Mr. V. Shridhar, and Mr. Naresh Naram from Reliance Industries Limited. As these esteemed group of awardees now join the previous two cycles of winners, I think we have one small step in discovering India's innovations. And we hope to inspire and ignite so many more innovations. And who knows, there may be some ideas being born today in this room. And on that note of hope, I'd like to say thank you very much.